Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup features the Seattle Pilots versus the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium. On the mound for the Pilots today is Marty Patton, whose record is 9-14 with a 475 ERA. And pitching for the Yankees is Fritz Peterson, whose record is 15-12 with a 307 ERA. Okay, so we took three of four uh, versus the Senators. <laughs> Walking it off yesterday on an error. I, now, if you didn't stick around long enough to take a look at the box score with us, uh, you may not have known, but uh, we scored three runs in the ninth inning. That was great. We won the ball game. Uh, but I thought it was on a uh, fielder's choice when in actuality... It was the second error of the inning for the Senators and the fourth of the ball game for them. Um, and, uh, you know, I've said it a couple times. As long as we're winning, I don't care how it is that we go about getting the victory. But, uh, you know, a walk-off error, uh, at least it wasn't against us. You know, like we didn't do it. So that's kind of the good thing. So we did move uh, to within two games of the Athletics. And... Here's where things get tough. Now, we've done what we needed to do to get this close, but now we have nine games in a row on the road uh, facing the Yankees, who are in second place, the Indians, who are in third place, and the Red Sox, who are bottom dwellers uh, in the East before we play Detroit back at home. So these nine games on the road is probably the sink or swim portion of uh, of this playoff chase. We do have one day off that is on the fifth coming up. So that'll be nice. We, that'll come at the right time. We need to take like two of three from the Yankees at Yankee stadium. I don't know how we're going to do that. Uh, it's going to be really a struggle the rest of the way, but um, one way or another, um, we are going to uh, try to make a way, you know, make it possible for us to uh, stick in there to the end. Uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started with today's game. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Uh, we are almost underway with the Detroit Tigers season. Uh, we're going to start tomorrow, tomorrow's opening day. Uh, we did the spring training uh, trades, free agent signings, and injuries video yesterday. Uh, a video that I've never done before, but it was a lot of fun uh, going day by day in the month of March, simulating a day and waiting to see uh, what would happen, if anything. And there were like three trades. Some real big uh, heavy hitters were traded uh, in the month of March in that sim. So tomorrow is opening day then for the 1984 Detroit Tigers season replay. Uh, Toronto comes to town. It's uh, Steve Davis who's a left-handed starter for Toronto getting the opening day nod versus Jack Morris. And uh, that is going to be a lot of fun. And we'll have more to say about the Tigers uh, in their own separate video. So stay tuned for that. So we have Marty Patton on the mound today going for his 10th win. Uh, that will be a struggle versus this Yankees lineup. Um, let's take a look here. The current Yankees are batting 233 against him. So he's had some success uh, and all of our bullpen is available with the exception of Diego Sigi, who gave us a couple innings of relief yesterday um, now do I have the lineup correct for Fritz yes I do okay great so here's our lineup today versus the left-hander Fritz Peterson as you can see uh, we've got all of our best guys in there we are going to give a uh, uh, McNurt need the day off and give Jerry May a chance to play today. Uh, he uh, hits lefties really well. I think he's batting over 400. So we'll give him a shot to uh, make us look good today. Let's go ahead and do the official lineup rundown for the Seattle Pilots. Batting leadoff. Playing shortstop is Freddie Pata. Batting second. At second base is Gary Sutherland. 
Batting third in left field is Lou Pinello. Batting cleanup, playing first base is Darren Johnson. Batting fifth in right field is Tommy Agee. Batting sixth, playing third base is Rich Rollins. Batting seventh in center field is Don Bosch. Batting eighth and catching is Jerry May. And batting ninth is Marty Patton. Okay, let's take a look here at Fritz Peterson, 27-year-old left-hander, making his 32nd start of the year. He's 15-12 and 12 with a career high in wins with a 307 ERA. Pretty damn good there. 132 strikeouts and 237 and two-thirds innings pitched. Opponents are betting 243 against him. His fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. His ground ball percentage is 44 percent. He's a three-pitch pitcher, but the only good pitch is his fastball rated in 87. A curve right at league average. Overall rated in 88. Um, as I mentioned, he's 27 years old. He goes to free agency in two more years. Okay. Well, has he faced us? Let's see here. Um, come on. Seattle. Yes, he has. Way back on June 8th, he went eight innings, giving up one run. It was unearned. No walks, five strikeouts, uh, and he got the victory. So well, he has had some success. Okay, let's take a look at the defense for the Yankees, and it's good all the way around. Wow, the lowest rated defensive player is 84 at first base. That is Tony Soleda. There's a bunch of schlubs in that lineup, too. Okay, here we go. Freddie Patek leading off against Fritz Peterson. And he strikes out. That is something that Patek does not do. I hope that's not the indicator of how this game is going to go. One down here is uh, Gary Sutherland. Still batting 366 versus lefties. Oh, two count to him. Hard hit. Ball to first. Soleda. Stepping on the bag for out number two. And Lou Pinella with two down. Hits a fly ball to left. Easily caught by Roy White. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Yankees lineup rundown. Batting leadoff playing shortstop is Frank Baker. Batting second in right field is Bobby Mercer. Batting third in catching is Thurman Munson. Batting cleanup, playing first base is Tony Soleda. Batting fifth in center field is Jim Little. Batting sixth at third base is Bob Bailey. Batting seventh in left field is Roy White. Batting eighth, playing second base is Horace Clark. And batting ninth is Fritz Peterson. And we've got Marty Patton, as we've seen. He's done well against the Yankees this year. He is making his 29th start, 9-14, with a 4.75 ERA. Only 83 strikeouts in 153 in the third innings pitch. He does not walk very many. If you saw the league leaders video, you know that he has the best walk to innings pitch ratio of uh, anybody uh, in the American League. Um, his opponent's batting average is 288. He does have a couple of games shut out. Fastball topping out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is also 44%. He's a two-pitch pitcher. Only decent pitch is the four-seam fastball. That is rated in 82. Overall at 80, the 26-year-old ready is arbitration eligible next year. Let's take a look at his log. Uh, the Yankees. Nope. He either hasn't faced them this year. Well, he, well obviously he has, right? There were 32 plate appearances, so that must have been in April when that happened. Okay, let's take a look here at our defense. Yeah, it pales in comparison. Uh, the only step up we have is uh, Jerry May catching instead of McNerty. First and second are uh, just below league average. Frank Baker leading off. I couldn't tell you a damn thing about Frank Baker or why he's playing shortstop in a pennant chase, but there's Patton walking him. A guy who doesn't even walk people has walked the leadoff batter. And uh, I am already frustrated with where this is going to go. Bobby Mercer 
Ground ball to second. Can we turn two with Baker running? Nope, we just get to force at second base. So one down, runner on first. Here's the catcher, Thurman Munson. First pitch swinging and a base hit to right. Mercer going to third. First and third, one down. And Tony Soled is up. Um, he's batting 211, but he walks a lot. It looks like that 358 on base percentage. We're going to pitch to him. We're going to keep the infield back just in case we could get a double play. He pops it up to Sutherland. So normally I'd feel like we're going to get out of this, but um, I don't know. Is Jim Little up. Not the best hitter. He's batting 243 with two home runs. Another guy that doesn't seem like he should be even in the lineup in the pennant chase. And a basic. Yeah, that's going to score two. Oh, Munson's going to hold up. So it's one nothing, New York. And I would say this game is over um, because that's the way it usually goes. But we did come back and win yesterday. So. Oh, now it's over. <laughs> I don't think we're going to score three runs against Fritz Peterson. So, and a box scores the third. Yeah, this game is absolutely over now. And another walk. Horace Clark's going to gap it. So, oh, wow. They bat around here in the first inning. And Fritz Peterson, a pretty good hitting pitcher in his time, will fly out to left. So they get three runs and four hits. We balked in a run. And we're down three to nothing. So that's, that's today's ball game right there. Johnson is going in the gap at Yankee Stadium. Good job by him. There's our first hit. Only his seventh double in 315, well, 325, if you uh, combine Philadelphia. Runner in scoring position, here's Tommy Ag. Full count, a ground ball to second. At the very least, that gets Johnson to third with one out. Um, I mean, these all these outfielders have great arms, right? I know Bobby Mercer does. Oh, wow, it shows him only having average arm, but he's got great range, and he's a good fielder. Um, who else is out there? Little, I don't know about. He's got a, Well, he's good at everything as well. And in left is Roy White, and Roy White does not have a good arm. All right, well. Let's try to get one back with a sack fly. Or should we? No, there's only one out. Let's see. Let's go on contact. And if Rollins gets it to the outfield, great. If it's a ground ball, we should score. Oh, that'll, that'll do it. Good job, Rollins. It's not very deep, though. Johnson will take 80% chance, and he is safe at home. And we are on the board with a sack fly. Three to one. That's, I mean, we're going to play small ball today if we get guys on base. Yankee Stadium not really giving up many home runs except for down the lines where it's just over 300 feet left field. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Do you think Patton got it out of his system? He walked two batters, averaging two batters per nine. How much worse could it be? And strikes out Frank Baker second time through. Walks him the first time. There's a comebacker from Mercer to Patton and an error. So we've had two walks, an error, and a balk. Ground ball at the middle base hit, of course. So that'll be it for Patton today. Um, the game is not going to allow him to do whatever it is uh, that we need to win. So we're going to take him out, bring in Ron Locke, who is very good 
against left-handers. Tony Soleda hits lefties better than righties as a left-hander. That makes no damn sense at all. We're going to play back. Uh, I mean, we'll give up a run. I mean, we may not score another run anyway. So we're going to play back, try to get a double play, and maybe just maybe get out of the inning. Oh, he crushed it. It will be caught. Mercer scores. It's 4-1. Tag that on to, um, on to Patton's line. And it's 4-1. to So the Yankees get the run back on the sack fly. We go to the top of the third. Jerry May into the gap in left center field for a double. That's kind of amazing, right? I mean, who would have thunk it? That is his first double as a pilot, only his second double on the season. Um, hmm. We'll take out Locke. We got so many pitchers. We can bring in a different pitcher in inning the rest of the way, and we would still have a couple guys left over. Um, all right, so we're going to bring in a right-handed bat. If they were good at hitting lefties, they'd already be in the ball game. Let's do Danny Walton. He's coming the first off the bench. Keep the infield in, which is just stupid. Ground ball to third. Yeah. Fly ball to right. Will May tag on that? Maytag, I just said. There we go. He does tag and go to third. And Gary Sutherland, despite batting 364 against Lefty's grounds off the third. We go to the bottom of the third inning. We'll bring in another pitcher. And let's bring in Dick Bates. We could pick a dick, and we're picking Dick Bates. Bates, we got a righty, we got all these switch hitters. The Yankees are a tough lineup despite, you know, some low batting averages in there. Let us hit the right. Let's just get this game over with now. And a walk. And I drive into center. Well, Bailey doesn't even tag. I mean, they're up three to, they're up four by three runs. I mean, I don't think Peterson would bunt. Strikes out. Frank Baker walks for the second time. Fourth walk issued in not even three innings by our pitchers. And then Mercer strikes out. Here's Luke. So yeah, I found out thanks to um, a couple of our subscribers, Freddie, John, both mentioned that the new um, Out of the Park Baseball, the, the 2024 version is out, and that you can play consecutive seasons just like we do here. And that's really all I need to know because the gameplay here is so bad. I, The only problem I have right now is um, I kind of want to finish out our pilots projected, um, you know, future for the sim here. I think, feel like we've got one more year of the 1984 Tigers, and then I could just stop playing that and pick another sim to play with outside uh, another uh, uh, simulated uh, career path with another team for outside the park. So I don't think I'm even going to buy the new version. I don't think it deserves my money. Um, like, it, it comes out tomorrow, and none of the specs are even available. Like, what's new about it? Like, I, I went to the website last night to actually buy it. I thought it was going to be available, but um, I got an email saying that it wasn't. And I'm like, well, 
I mean, there's nothing that even tells me about it. You're going to release the, you're going to release the game, without even knowing what, letting your fans know what uh, they can expect. Um, I mean, it's just so dumb. I don't get it. He just walked, what, three batters that inning? And then Roy White got picked off. No, only two batters. It's five to one. Yeah, we won't get another hit. Like, I know I complain about this every single time. But oh, there's a hit right there. You know, the game has become so predictable, it's pathetic. Maze two for two. Oh, well, he had to get a hit, right? Because the pitcher's up next, so... Um, that's we know these things now. It always happens. There's zero randomness to this ball game. All right. I need a new pitcher. Um, we have a couple switchies and a left coming up. Let's bring in Bill Edgerton who pitched a scoreless inning yesterday in his very first appearance in a pilot's uniform. I thought he did pretty well. That's our seventh walk right there. This game sucks so bad. Oh, my God. There's our eighth walk. He just walked the pitcher. Oh, my God. How does the maker of this live with himself? He walks the first two batters. Two batters get hits. Knocks in the runs. Then a hit batter. So we do not have a pass ball. We do not have a wild pitch, but we have everything else so far today. Still nobody out. He just walked in a run. You can mark that off the list. Finally, he strikes out a batter. And a fly ball will score another run. It is nine to one. Nine to one going to the sixth inning. It's embarrassing how bad this game is. Although I, I guess if the Yankees, I mean, we are probably the fraud team, right? I mean, we, we should not be two games out in the last month of a yeah, our first season. Um, but then, like, this team has nobody on it. I mean, Mercer and Munson in his rookie year, he wasn't even a rookie in real life. Roy White, a very gr very good uh, Yankee player. These other guys are nobodies. And yet they are absolutely tearing us a new one. Oh, God. That's the second infield single this inning. We are going to the bottom of the sixth inning. So there's been nine walks by our team. That makes it tough. To go with nine hits and a hit batter and an error. Frank ba Baker, a 117 hitter coming into the game, has two hits and walked twice. Bottom of the seventh. So Edgerton, not a major league player. Not major league ready. We'll bring in John Morris. I never thought we'd see John Morris again this year, but why not? 
talk about guys who walk every other batter. He's walked more than he struck out this year. He gets righties out. He doesn't get lefties for some reason. Strikes out Salada, though. He pops up Little. All right. Well, Morris is definitely not going to bat. He's batting 333 this year, though. Um, all right, who are we going to bring off the bench here? We need to get a different name in there. What about Steve Whitaker? I think Whitaker made the team out of spring training um, because of his power, and then he just didn't do anything. Couldn't get it done. So let's get Steve Whitaker into the ballgame. I know he's a left-hander, but who cares? It's a double. Tenth of the year as a pilot. Double him off. All of our players who hit lefties well have been completely shut out today. Of course. Um... You know what? Uh, let's see here. What are we doing? Bringing a pitcher. What about Dick Bainey? Bringing a dick in without bringing the other dick. Doesn't really make sense. Ground ball to short. Roy White. Eleven hits. Hey, there's the tenth walk. Pinch hitter from Blomberg. Play. We're gonna bring in Hal Reniff. Thirteenth game, 0 1, 560 ERA. Opponents betting 239. His he's got a palm ball. That is his only good pitch. Ready to 76, the 31-year-old righty is a free agent at the end of the year. Okay. Oh, it's, they're going to give us so many junk runs right now. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's a cavern out there in center field. This game sucks so bad. Is that the ball game? Yep. All right. Well, that is about as bad as it can be. Um, it was over in the first inning. Oakland continues to lose. That's unbelievable. I'm grateful for that, but, I mean, it's like... The game doesn't want Oakland to run away with it. It seems like that every year. Like Baltimore got out to such a huge start, and then they went and changed all their roster. So now they can't pull away. All the division um, uh, uh, games behind are just half game, one and a half, three, and two. It feels really forced. Uh, we'll take a look at the headline news. Indians beat the White Sox. Boswell throws a three-hitter versus the Tigers. Yankees beat the Pilots. Transactions. Uh, Gary Gentry is going to miss five weeks for the Mets. He is a rookie starter. So if the Mets make the playoffs, I don't think they're going to have him. Um, at least maybe through the first round. Well, there's only one round. It's a championship and then the World Series, so he might be back for the World Series if they need him. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Hey, you know what? Opening day is tomorrow. Turn that frown upside down. We're going to have the 1984 Detroit Tigers season replay opening day for the 1984 season tomorrow. 
I am excited. It's going to be tough to play two games a day and do the editing and get it uploaded. and It all takes time, but uh, we're going to probably have to do that for about three weeks. Um, and then, you know, then we'll, it'll be smooth sailing after that. Um, we're going to give player of the game to Darren Johnson. He had three hits. Marty Patton couldn't get out of the second inning. When he comes out and walks two in the first inning, uh, plus the error, you know, um, a box score to run. I mean, I mean, it was over. Uh, that's no fun, right? I mean, like, why, why bother? Um, so, yeah. All right. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. We're going to come back and have a good day tomorrow, that's for sure. Win or lose, it's always fun to start a new series, and uh, I'm excited for that. So, until then, everyone, have a great day.